Well, welcome to Seattle Maritime Matters. I'm Tosca Pinder with the Seattle Propeller Club. And today we're here with Port of Seattle Commissioner Toshiko Hashigawa. Thanks for joining us, Commissioner. Thank you so much, Madam President Pinder. I'm glad to be here with you today. Um, why don't we start having you tell us a little bit about the Port of Seattle and its role within the region? Absolutely. Well, um, the Port of Seattle, I think fundamentally at its core, is a connector, right? Um, it is very unique in that uh, it contains both an airport and a seaport. Um, and so the Port of Seattle oversees operations for both of those aspects. But uh, really when you take into account who we are and where we are situated in the global perspective, we are equidistant between Asia and Europe. Um, you know, we are the point of entry for goods and people from around the world um, to make their entry into the United States um, and around the region. I think we're widely regarded as the economic engine, um, not just of our uh, region, but of the nation. And we have that's ev evidenced in over 181,000 direct and indirect jobs billions of dollars in business revenues that are generated, contract opportunities for businesses, that's jobs for workers. Um, and so really what we have is the opportunity to influence our local economy, but also influence global trade. Um, and the Port of Seattle as a connector is really what is going to give us the opportunity to make meaningful changes uh, worldwide from right here at home. And I think that's really what draws me to the port. You see, I'm a fourth generation, fourth generation Japanese American. I am a Seattle girl from the Beacon Hill neighborhood in South Seattle. I actually grew up equidistant from the airport and um, the waterfront, right? So we used to watch the planes take off and growing up, I used to fish. We used to go down to the docks just right underneath the West Seattle Bridge and buy fish from the natives there. Um, but now in my day job, we run fun to catch but toxic to eat campaigns because, you know, English language learning communities don't know the dangers of our waters. So that's the other piece of the port is that we have a huge portfolio that also touches on pollution that endangers um, the quality of life of our uh, residents. Um, it impacts our ecology and our wildlife um, and our climate crisis, right? So being able to come up with strategies, be able to track sort of our carbon footprint and address it is really important. So, um, you know, the port, its core mission is to promote economic opportunities and promote a higher quality of life in the region by advancing trade, by advancing travel, commerce, and job creation. But it's to do this in an equitable, accountable, and environment, environmentally responsible manner. That's a really steep charge. And so we need to take a really big picture um, approach, a holistic approach to how we are raising that quality of life and opportunities. Um, and that's uh, a challenge that I'm excited to rise to. Great, yeah, that was a great overview. You know, really kind of diving in and on the heels of economic opportunity, um, the economic engine that is our area and really like the residents, you know, tell us how the port is working to create economic and quality of life opportunities to really build back better for our residents. I think that's the uh, multi-million dollar question. Um, and it's one that we have to take into account that I'm stepping to this position, not just in the outskirts of one of the worst recessions um, in our history, but also as we build back from a global health crisis, right? And in the midst of a climate crisis as well. And so I don't take these things as completely separate. I think that um, in fact, the way that we respond to building back our, um, um, our economy here locally is also going to help us drive down pollutions and raise the public health and quality of life for all people. And Maritime has such an integral role for that. In fact, I think that our Maritime community right here in the Pacific Northwest is really leading on transforming our industry globally. And that's something that the Port of Seattle can also be very proud of when we look at 
updating um, the art infrastructure to make sure that some of our bigger container ships, right, that are coming in and out of our marinas are going to be equipped with shore power so that they don't have to idle while they're in our harbors. They're not making all that noise. They're not polluting our waters and our air. It's looking at big cruise ships and the way that we are allowing or disallowing dumping into our waters, um, asking them to be able to also um, uh, e uh, plug in physically to use shore power instead of actually just uh, idling with their fossil fuels polluting our air. Um, but, you know, I think the other thing that I really bring as an individual from this region is an understanding that um, fishing is integral to our regional identity, right? My, my, my own ancestors arrived here by boat in order to make economic opportunity for themselves. It's a piece of who we are. It's a piece of how we relate to our neighbors, our community, but also like the very world that we live in. Um, and so, you know, when you take into a piece of how proud we are of fishing as a piece of our culture and our heritage, um, and how many micro uh, businesses there are, um, they have a really important role of making sure that we sustain a healthy economy, um, not just a global shipping and trade footprint, right, but also sustaining our families, our communities right here at home. In fact, fishing was, um, it had its, its best year on record during the pandemic. So it goes to show that fishing and shipping are the cornerstone of our economy. Like when all else comes to a standstill, that's what we can re rely upon. And I have so much gratitude to the people in the maritime industry who are very much our frontliners, making sure that we had the food, making sure that we had the goods that we needed and relied upon during a global pandemic. And so when I look at this limited real estate that we have in our waterfront, how do we really maximize that as an asset? Right. How do we make sure that we are really optimizing on what is available to us? And so I'm very proud about what's been done with Terminal 5 to make sure that it's like it's a premier gateway um, for shipping operations. I'm very excited about the possibilities for Terminal 46 and what that can mean for the future of this region's economy, both by the way of shipping and trade, but by the way of good paying family wage jobs um, that will create healthier communities. Um, but fishing continues to be such a huge piece of who we are and what we do as a region as well. Um, and so it's all a piece that I'm very proud to, uh, it's all a piece of a larger conversation that I'm very proud to be a part of and hope to be a meaningful service to. Because as we transform into these new normals of abandoning these fossil fuel paradigms, asking people to make the transition to sustainable green energy, that shouldn't happen at the expense of your business closing. It shouldn't happen at the expense of, um, of not being able to make your paycheck, right? So that too is a piece of equity work, is not just by racial equity or gender equity, but also understanding that micro businesses need to be supported and be able to, to survive a transition as we are evolving as an industry. And that's very important. How well, it's exciting to see just your passion come through in our conversation. And, you know, really, if you could put that into words, you know, what makes you so passionate about the future mm -hmm. of the maritime industry and really the great mm -hmm. careers that it does offer for people and, and particularly, you know, women or people from yes. communities of color? Right. I, and I, I appreciate um, that because, um, you know, I, I think about that a lot. And, so in my culture as a Japanese American, I was raised to appreciate that we are a part of something much greater than ourselves. And I am a product of what many, many other people have done long before I arrived to the scene, right? Um, and that applies also as now an elected woman of color, the first Asian woman at the Port Commission. I mean, I'm here because there have been trailblazers before to make sure I could take that mantra forward. Um, and in fact, I'm indebted to pay that forward to the next generation. So um, the other piece about, a really important piece about who I am is in addition to a granddaughter of, of Japanese immigrants, right? In addition to, um, to port commissioner is, is I'm a mom. 
right? I have my my little girl here at home and I watch her look at the, the planes going overhead. And I see her look to the ocean and I, I wonder if she's going to be able to enjoy the riches of what this region has to offer the way I did growing up. And we are at a really critical moment where we are being compelled to rise to the challenges of our time. And I think that's what really drives me is understanding that what the port does next will determine what our region looks and feels like in perpetuity. Um, and so, you know, no pressure, but also I, I, I approach it humbly. I approach it humbly and say, four years. The voters of King County have afforded me four years to do something meaningful. And so what's that going to be? Well, I can say we certainly look forward to seeing what that is going to be for you in the next four years. And we look forward to um, watching you grow into that role. So um, thank you for your time today. We appreciate you joining us, Commissioner Hasegawa. Thank you, Madam President Pinder. It is an honor and a pleasure, and I look forward to the next one.